People see you at LA, they say, dude, where's my car? <laughs> That happened one time and you won't let it go. Drop a like if you're a fan of Drop the Mic, join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on, but also, don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutouts and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hosted by Method Man and Hailey Bieber, Drop the Mic is a comic battle rap competition show where celebrities from all areas of entertainment face off each week, with the studio audience usually deciding who the winner is. Since everything is allowed and there are no boundaries when it comes to lyrics and matching the contestants, there have been some rather unexpected moments on the show, and in today's video, we'll be looking into 8 Drop the Mic battles that shocked the world. One of the most shocking battles was the one from 2016 that started with two contestants but, in a twist, ended with a third one that put the first two to rest. This one starts with David Schwimmer and James Corden exchanging verses. Corden went hard on Schwimmer from the get-go, introducing him as David who was famous in 95 when friends were on TV, but now in 2016 he doesn't have any friends. Now Schwimmer didn't hold back either, striking back at Corden by saying that the television host would have to be known in the first place in order to be famous, and that the only people who watch his show are asleep or dead. The actor then finished the assault of his verse by stating that he loves the English, as he had married one, but wondered did Corden's wife choose him because she's blind. Corden then countered by asking how come he's such a loser when his name rhymes with winner before taking a jab at Schwimmer's career. Wrapping up his verse, Corden delivered the hardest blow by referencing the Friends theme song by saying I'll be there for you. Now Schwimmer brushed it all off and referencing Ross's pet monkey Marcel from Friends told Corden that he had worked with a monkey who had more skills than him. The last blow of his verse was poking fun of Corden's middle name, Kimberly, and just when it seemed that he would claim victory even though Corden was a better rapper, Australian actress Rebel Wilson entered in a boxing robe, thrashing both guys and showing them who the real champion is. Don't that on me, cause you know it's not worth it, everybody knows my rhymes are pitch perfect! She rapped before dropping the mic. During Drop the Mic's first season, the Big Bang Theory actors Kunal Nayar and Maim Bialik faced off in one of the meanest battles on the show ever. The actor who plays Raj in the popular sitcom kicked things off by telling Bialik that no one cared when she returned to acting after leaving TV following the show Blossom in order to get a PhD. Bialik hit back with a shot below the belt by telling her co-star that his Indian accent wasn't cute but that he was simply mispronouncing words before he told her to change her name because it sounded like a side dish for a falafel. He also wondered why the actress who plays Sheldon's girlfriend Amy on The Big Bang Theory could deconstruct an element in real life but just couldn't be funny. Bialik replied by basically saying that all Indians looked alike when she told Nayar that he was a good actor and that she loved him in Silicon Valley before interrupting herself with the words Wait, wait, wrong dude. <laughs> when she hit back at him for making fun of her name by saying his name was the kind of name that makes Donald Trump nervous though, Nayar pointed out that that wasn't funny because it was true before moving on to the last round, which she ended by making fun of her nose. But Bialik was the obvious winner of this battle after she made fun of Nayar's lack of work or anything else but the Big Bang Theory before finishing him off in style when she gave him the finger accompanied by Sheldon's famous catchphrase Bazinga! Ah! When James Corden went against Ashton Kutcher, it turned out to be a rather mean battle. Right off the bat, Corden took a swing at Kutcher's career, saying that he was so bad in jobs that even Siri, the iOS virtual assistant, won't talk to him. He then slammed Kutcher for his charity work, spitting You do great charity work year after year, wanna save something from dying? Start with your career! Now Kutcher had some solid jabs as well, rapping People see me at LA, they say look it's a star, people see you at LA, they say dude where's my car? <sighs> Still, Corden utterly annihilated his opponent in the second round by dragging his career through the mud, telling him that the only people missed Charlie Sheen was when he joined Two and a Half Men, adding You invested all your money in technology and apps! same if I knew I couldn't act. Now even though Kutcher retaliated by telling the TV host that he looks like a baby of Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump, Corden got the best of him as he was crowned champion by Diddy himself. During the first season of Drop the Mic, football defensive lineman Michael Bennett took on actress and singer Vanessa Hudgens and while she surprised the audience with her rapping skills, Bennett shocked everyone with his very last line. Just like most battles, Hudgen started this one off by making fun of Bennett's looks, saying that they were probably matched because the theme was Beauty and the Beast. 
She then went on to congratulate him on the Super Bowl before pretending to realize the mistake because that was his brother. Bennett hit back by calling her a fake Ashley Tisdale, but Hudges wasn't moved and simply pointed out that his beard looked like he glued pubes on his face and that he was the only man she knows who breaks his sweat just from thinking. Bennett eventually told her that the bikini she wore in the movie Spring Breakers was a welcome distraction because it kept him from having to watch her acting, but what really shocked the audience was when he called her a certain kind of stain. Now, even though everyone was speechless for a moment, it was still Vanessa Hudgens who took the trophy home. Seeing Gaten Matarazzo go against Darren Chris was quite a shocker, especially because the Stranger Things star is half Chris's age. Chris began the battle by calling out Matarazzo for his role and asking him if they should just get Millie Bobby Brown on the stage, referencing her rapping to Nicki Minaj's monster. Still, the young actor didn't hold back, thanking Chris for Glee Ruin in his childhood and calling him out for a very Potter musical from 2009, roasting himself at the same time by saying, I'm a nerd, but that's the nerdiest. I've ever heard. And adding that his opponent's career has more gaps than he has in his teeth. Chris fired back, calling Matarazzo a real life cabbage patch kid, but ultimately, the young star won the battle and the trophy by telling Chris, You had no chance tonight against me on the stage because I'm twice the superstar you are and half of your age. <laughs> Seeing actor Ken Jeong and former basketball star Shaquille O'Neal up on stage together surely looked like this battle was already decided before it began, considering that Shaq is about twice Jung's size and could probably swallow the actor whole. Jung started the battle off by saying that Shaquille hadn't won anything without the help of Kobe Bryant before calling him a diabetic Frankenstein. The former basketball star hit back with a joke about Jung's size and the fact that he was only famous for The Hangover, before wondering why after battling Yao Ming, he now had to deal with the famous Chinese basketball star's mini-me. Things got a little weird when Shaquille then told Jung it was big ball time and basically shoved his junk into Jung's face due to the 20 inch height difference. But Jung knew how to hit back though, saying that instead of Dunkin' Basketballs, it was Dunkin' Donuts now and that he wondered how Shaquille had ever played for Miami seeing as his balls didn't have any heat. Shaq replied that his championship rings would fit Jung as a necklace before the actor roasted him by making fun of the former basketball player being called the greatest rapping athlete by saying he assumed like with everything else. Charles Barkley beat him at that too. You once complained about your toe, which ain't no lie, but you whined so damn much. I was like, but did you die? Even though Shaquille had a great comeback when he said Jung only dropped ish because his hands were so small, and then offering him a condom from his wallet as a sleeping bag. The audience eventually picked Jung as the night's winner, perhaps because they felt that the basketball star had just made one too many penis jokes. The battle between Seth Rogen and Joseph Gordon-Levitt was a pretty brutal one, as the guys really went at it. Wearing a Wu-Tang Clan sweater, Gordon-Levitt took a jab at Rogen because of his weight, telling him to go on a diet or at least stop eating from James Franco's butt. The line cut really deep, but the comedian retaliated by calling out the not-so-successful movies his opponent starred in, while also stating that he's beating the actor at his own game by having more leading roles. Even though both guys got a serious amount of cheers from the crowd for their cutting lines, Gordon Levitt buried Rogan and won the battle by calling the comedian That guy from Knocked Up just got knocked up down! When someone says rap battle, you probably wouldn't think of Jerry Springer, but the former host of his own show agreed to battle fellow television presenter, actress and singer Ricky Lake in the premiere episode of Drop the Mic's second season. After she likened him to a skin disease that continues to linger and saying that he made the Kardashians look like the wire. No disrespect, you are a real trendsetter with a style you created. Too bad Maury does it better. Bring her head back by comparing Lake to Rachel Ray, only with nothing smart to say, before saying that John Travolta had made a better looking chick in the remake of Hairspray. While Springer compared Lake to Oprah Winfrey without the success, Lake said that he was the only person who hates Game of Thrones because the biggest show on incest was no longer his own. Springer eventually called Lake a flash in the pan before making the crowd chant his name and being crowned the winner by Method Man. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.